Praise the Lord, everybody. How you doing? This is your friend. This is your brother. This is Elder Fallens. And I just wanted to spend a minute and a moment with you. I just wanted to talk with you or talk to you from my heart. I wanted to encourage the saints, no matter what, I know we've been going through this pandemic and we've been having to practice social distances and so much has been going on. But guess what, saints? 2020 is still going to be my year. 2020 is still going to be your year. I refuse to give the devil my year. Every day that we get up and we breathe and God allows us to see another day, even though we're dealing with such things that are beyond our, cir uh, beyond our control, circumstances that are out of our hands. Hands. I found out that God does his best work in the midst of chaos. And if you read your Bibles in the famines, he always provided for those that belong to him. He, he would use the famine to let the world know who belonged to him or who was a part of his kingdom. So no matter what's going on, God's going to sustain the saints. I just wanted to come on just to share a minute and a moment with the saints to let you know that please don't give the devil your year. The rest of this year, you got to decree and declare it's going to work for your favor. It's going to work for your good. Um, throughout my year of preaching as an evangelist, I don't have um, as many years as some of these other people and some people that I look up to, but I thank God for the years of ministry that I do have. And um, there's been sometime you'll preach a text and you'll preach it and you'll know it or you'll preach it and it'll become uh, so a part of you but it still yet has not been uh, how can I say birth or has not been manifested until hard times I've learned out and the late Bishop Kenneth Mose gave me a nugget and I thank God for being able to sit at his great feet for at least one whole year just to go and intimately sit under his feet and let him impart and talk to me and I remember him telling me he said, um, when you preach a sermon, preach from your season. And if you preach from your season, you'll never go wrong. You know, and there's been years that I preached uh, Matthew chapter eight, a very familiar text, but now it's more effective than it's ever been in my life. Matthew uh, chapter eight, this is a familiar text. Once I start reading, I know you'll catch it. Matthew chapter eight, verses 23 through 27. It says, now when he had got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly there was a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Hallelujah. It says, but then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We're perishing. But Jesus said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Hallelujah. Then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm got to say it again. And there was a great calm, you know, so that the men marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Isn't it amazing that you could be so close to Jesus or so close to somebody and still not really know their ability or know who they are? And that's what this pandemic has brought out to so many believers who've been in church all their life or church uh, as, far, as long as they know they got to know him in a whole nother way. I don't know about nobody else, but I can honestly say the scripture has come alive for me. The scripture that says the Jess shall live by faith. And throughout this pandemic, I have been truly living by faith. He has been my Jehovah Shalom, my peace. He has been my Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He has been my Jehovah Nisi, the God that gives me victory. And most of all, you all, I decree and declare over my life and over yours too. He has been our Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is with us. I mean, those, and I found out that how he healed my mom and my aunt, that he is truly Jehovah Rapha. That's why I can't serve Buddha. I can't serve Muhammad. I can't serve Harry Krishna, Yahweh, Binya. I don't have no history with him. <laughs> my track record with God is solid, secure, and can be verified. Hallelujah. My testimony is verification that the God that I serve is, a while, is alive and well. His eyes to see, his ears to hear, mouth to talk, and not I thank God he has hands that can touch. Why did I just come on for this minute and this moment just to share this nugget? I wanted to take emphasis in verse 26. Calm down. Tell the saints, calm down. Every day when I look at the news and the media, I have to tell myself, calm down. Nothing can take God by surprise. God is not blindsided by anything. He is the Elohim, the strong God. He is the omnipotent God, the all-seeing God. So I just want to tell you, calm down. And in this text, Jesus did three things and we can do it. He gave us the same ability. He took command. He controlled 
and he created. The first thing they did when they woke him up, it says that he arose. When he arose, he arose with authority. He rose up with confidence and you have that same confidence in you, my sister, my brother. Every day you get up, arise to take command. Arise to take the authority of your day. Every day is a gift that God has given to us that he has not taken away. He gave it to Adam and we still have it. Hallelujah. We thank God that Jesus was the second Adam who gave us authority and control that the first Adam lost. Hallelujah. But he took command. Then secondly, he, he took control. He, he rebuked. He told, he, he said what he wanted to happen. He rebuked it. And then once he rebuked it, guess what? The last thing is he created. He created what he already wanted to see. You hear me? So I'm encouraging you all to do that. Take command, take control and create your day. Every day you get up. I know I have to do it because we can't rely on the government. The information that we get from on a day-to-day -day basis, it changes. Uh, you, we can't live in fear, but yet and still we have to still use caution and wisdom. Them. So listen, we got to get up and you got to say every day, God is going to sustain me. He's going to keep, keep take care of me. He's going to keep me. I want to encourage your heart. Calm down. Calm down. The enemy knows what he does. He knows how to shake us and get us all uh, frazzled and, and disheveled. But one thing about it, Jesus gave us a good example in this storm. He, All we got to do is wake him up. If he lives on the inside, wake him up. Wake him up with prayer. Wake him up with a song of praise. Wake him up with a personal relationship. And then when you wake him up, take command, take control, and create Create what you want to see. I'm a living witness that I know, and I know the difference between a thermostat and a thermometer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A thermometer just tells you what it is, but a thermostat will adjust the temperature to where the person has a good comfort level or wherever they want the desire for it to be. And if you got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you got a spiritual thermostat that could adjust any environment that you walk into. Not gonna hold you long, but I just want to get on to share a minute and a moment with you. Please, my brother, please, my sister, calm down. God got this. You hear me? And refuse to give the devil your 2020. It's still going to be your year. He's still going to bless you. You're still going to do all those things that you envision to do. A lot of times we got to trust God's weight. And I'm learning that in spiritual maturity, that God only answers us in three ways. Yes, no, and wait. When he gives us a yes, that means he's already prepared this thing for us to enjoy. When he tells us no, that means he's preparing for something greater. Well, what we may have asked is too small. Um, what we may have asked is not even in his will able to do damage to us. So I've learned how to praise him even when he tell me no. But most of all, I've learned how to enjoy God's wait. Because when I'm waiting on the Lord, he simply has me on pause. But when he hits play, he sends me restitution, recovery, and he will uh, allow me to be like David. I will pursue and recover all. So my sister, my brother, I just wanted to take these little 10 minutes just to tell you, calm down. Allow God to be God in your life. Wake him up. He's on the boat of your compassion. He's in the boat of your emotions. He's in the boat of your life. And just wake him up. Wake him up with prayer. Wake him up with praise. And when you wake him up, take command, take control, and create. I love you. This has been Elder Fallens. I pray that this little quick nugget gave you something to think about. Calm down. All right. And let's trust the God of our salvation. He's never lied, y'all. He's been there for us all the time. Always remember, only move in two directions, up and forward. And I promise to meet you at the top. There's room for you at the top. The top is where we belong. Be blessed, be well, be encouraged.